in the last stream, we were working on the Nether Matters questline. We were producing the Nether Organic Matter and sifting it over in our new end sieve here with our new Netherite Mesh to get a ton of new stuff. Now, it has been a few days since the last stream. And although my base isn't chunk loaded, like I haven't actually claimed these as chunk loaded chunks, you'll see the uh, green lines appear there if they're chunk loaded. But um, I think because my base is at server spawn, it is chunk loaded by default. And so between streams, all of this has been running for many, many days on end. And so we actually have quite a bit of, uh, of stuff backlogged. If we go and check over in, uh, in here, these drawers are basically all full. They're not particularly uh, large in capacity. They only hold 512 items. But uh, the problem that we're currently running into is one of storage due to the fact that all of these drawers here are full of things like soul dust, inferior essence, and prosperity shards, mostly because I think we don't have specific drawers for some of those items, but also because things like the prosperity shards are just full up. Now, the second problem that we're running into, and the reason why a few of these chests are empty, is that between streams, the pack has updated, and unfortunately, pack creator Ben has removed the ability to create cobblestone using the ex nihilo barrels. So a little while back, we set up this system in here. Uh, we had an ex nihilo barrel full of water underneath a lava source block, and that would continually turn the uh, water into cobblestone, the water coming from the uh, sink there, of course, and all that cobblestone was being piped around into all of these crucibles, producing an infinite amount of lava for us, which gave us not only power, but also all of the lava needed to make all of the different matters that we're sifting to get all of our resources. So Ben has nerfed that. Um, apparently he thought it was a bit too fast. I could maybe agree, uh, especially given how cheap the pipe upgrades are to make, uh, but that does mean that we now have to uh, reinvent how we generate cobblestone. And there are a few ways that we can do that. The obvious way right off the bat is to use the resource generators from the Opolis Utilities mod. These are not particularly expensive, but they are a little finicky to make in that you need uh, a bucket of lava and a bucket of water for every single one of them, which is not expensive per se, but it is just a little tedious to craft. And they're not particularly fast, they're quite slow. You can upgrade them by putting blocks atop the cobblestone. Um, and especially now that we have access to netherite scrap, we could put netherite blocks on top of the cobblestone to make cobblestone a fair bit faster than we were getting it before. But I think that's still not gonna be the best solution. And as I mentioned, it's a little tedious. There are a few other options. For example, we could make something like the Igneous Extruder from Thermal Expansion. This kind of works in a similar way to the resource generator. You can have it just generate infinite cobblestone for you. These ones do benefit uh, from the fact that you can put the um, integral components into them to make them quite a bit faster at uh, generating whatever resource it is they're generating. But I think there is an even better way for us to generate cobblestone going forward, and that is with mystical agriculture. Now that we have access to inferior essence, we should be able to get started with mystical agriculture. And if we can start growing some stone seeds, these ones right here, we can use those to get stone essence, and that stone essence can be crafted automatically into quite a large amount of cobblestone. Now, the thing that makes this even better is that we do have a mod in the, uh, the pack here that allows us to make higher tiers of botany pots. So there's the regular botany pots, which we have over here, like we're growing cactus with it, but we do have higher tiers. We have elite, we have ultra, and we have creative botany pots, which allow you to grow things much, much faster than the regular botany pot. And at least the first tier here doesn't seem too expensive. The elite botany pot requires two blocks of iron and one ender pearl. We currently have 587 blocks of iron and we have 70 ender pearls. So more than enough to make quite a few of these uh, botany pots. The next tier does require a nether star, which we don't quite have just yet. Although I'm hoping we will have those available to us at some point in the fairly near future. In fact, I think one of the uh, chapter challenge quest lines, in fact, this one here, the uh, chapter challenge six quest line does give you nether star seeds as a reward for completing it. And so once we have those, we will be able to grow nether stars. And then we can obviously use those to make the higher tier botany pots. And uh, eventually we do have access to the creative botany pot as well, which again, doesn't actually look too expensive. Although the creative essence is actually probably quite expensive now that I mention it. So I didn't think the enchanted golden apple was going to require creative essence, but nevertheless, let us quickly see if we can't craft up an elite botany pot, and let's see if we can get an idea as to just how fast that is. So the regular botany pot, super easy. 
And as we mentioned before, upgrading that to Elite, not going to be a problem either. And then we, of course, do want that to be a hopping Elite Botany Pot. And so if we do something like that, just as soon as we get a regular Minecraft Hopper, boom. And for now, we can put this down wherever. We'll pick that up in a second. Let's see if we can't get these cobblestone seeds. So for that, over here, we have a few quests to complete. The first quest is for Inferium seeds. Again, super easy for us to do. It's eight Inferium and one Wheat seed. I don't think that's gonna be a problem for us. Um, actually, I'm gonna take a quick detour to fix our storage situation because right now uh, we can't put anything into the system because all of these chests are full. So real quick, let's make sure that everything here has a place to go. And then there are two things we can do after that. One is that, of course, we can get some more of the uh, the emerald storage upgrades, and we can use those to make the uh, the slots for things like netherite scrap and prosperity shards bigger. But then also we could potentially look at getting some void upgrades as well to delete any excess items once we get past um, just a ridiculously large amount of any given resource. And uh, one thing that somebody did mention in the YouTube comments is that uh, last episode I purchased some of the emerald upgrades, these ones right here, despite the fact that we do now have uh, 1,870 emeralds available to us. So real quick, let's grab some emeralds. Let's grab some wood. We can quickly craft up some storage drawers here and therefore some draw upgrades. And then from there, we should be able to fairly easily make quite a few of these uh, storage upgrade tier fives. And I think I'll basically try and put at least one into every draw that we have. All right, so all of these now have at least one tier five storage upgrade in them. And so hopefully we shouldn't... Uh, have to worry about space too much in the near future. And I've gone through and taken most of the items that should be in drawers out of these chests here. Now, one thing that I have noticed that I think is going to be a problem is that uh, we're out of redstone. We've got three redstone dust left. The reason for that is that every single last piece of our redstone dust has been sent over here and, uh, and transformed into netherrack, which is not particularly good. I think it's this one here. It is. I'm going to change this to where uh, requires redstone, basically turning it off for the time being. We've got 1,000 nether transformation powder. And of course, we have a ton of all of the ways that you get from sifting that uh, nether organic matter. But unfortunately, all of our redstone has been used and we've not been making more redstone because our lava system is offline, which is not ideal. But hopefully, once we get uh, lava back online and cobblestone back online, we should hopefully start to get more redstone again. The question really is just whether or not we're going to need redstone in, in getting things back online. I don't think we are, because I don't think that uh, mystical agriculture uses a lot of it, but we are uh, about to find out. So uh, right here, we need to make a prosperity gemstone. That is fairly easy, one diamond and four prosperity shards. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make a few of these. Let's make, let's say 16, drop those back into the system just as soon as we uh, put them in our inventory so we can complete the quest, fantastic. From there, we then want to make an Inferium Gemstone, which is two Inferium Essence and one Prosperity Gemstone. That is completely fine. Boom, and boom. And then again, we'll make a few of those for now. I'm not quite sure how many we're going to need, but this is uh, really what we're after, the Inferium Infusion Crystal, which uh, again, not too bad. Let's have a look. Infusion Crystal, this guy, four Prosperity Shards, four Inferium Essence, and the uh, previously mentioned Inferium Gemstone gets us the Inferium Infusion Crystal, and the idea here is that you can use the infusion crystal to craft lower tiers of essence into higher tiers of essence. So if we take four inferior essence and craft it around one inferior infusion crystal, that will craft it into the next tier of essence, that being prudentium essence. And uh, there are, I think, five or six tiers of essence. You start out with inferior, move up to prudentium, then tertium, then imperium, then supremium, and then creative, I believe, is the final tier of essence. These are usually limited on how many uses they have. Yeah, you'll see it only has 251 uses left, so you can only use this a certain number of times, but the idea here is that we can then craft the next tier of Infusion Crystal. Uh, this one requires four Prudentium Essence, one Inferium Infusion Crystal, and four Prosperity Shards. Now, I don't know if you can use the previous tier crystal. You can, interesting. Okay, so I think it's gonna be in our best interest then. How much Inferium do we have? We've got a thousand Inferium, if we go ahead and basically use up this crystal, not completely, but to the point where it has almost one use left. I also don't know if it's new to 1.19 or not, but uh, I like that the uh, crystal kind of fades in color now, as opposed to having just a durability bar. That's, uh, that's pretty neat. 
we have got one, two, three, four left. So once we have one use left, I think after the last use, it will just break, it'll disappear. But I think we can use that, we can, to get another infusion crystal of the next tier that has 512 uses left. And so now we can take this one and craft it with uh, four of the next tier essence to make that totem essence and, uh, and so on and so forth. Now, uh, real quick, let's claim our quests here. We've got quite a bit of stuff available to us, including uh, two more Minecraft frogs as well and a few more uh, bee books as well as aqua dashes allows the wearer to walk on fluids while sprinting excuse me these also do go in a bobble slot which is fantastic because it means that we can wear them i think yeah down here because it means we can wear them alongside our warden boots so now if we um if we sprint we just walk on water uh, i think in order to be able to sprint i do need to eat a little bit Look at that. That is kind of cool. And it actually makes getting over to the boat a fair bit easier than it was before. Gosh, those mobs are so <laughs> loud. All right, let's head back over here and let's see if we uh, head on through to uh, the mystical essence quest line. This just kind of walks you through all of the different tiers of essence and uh, all of the different tiers of infusion crystal. Uh, but the thing that we are after is this guy right here, the infusion altar and the associated infusion pedestals. Because in order to make the stone seed, we have to craft this with infusion crafting. So we'll bookmark those, and we need four inferior essence, four stone, and one prosperity seed base, which is just one wheat seed and four prosperity shards. And we put all of those together on the infusion altar, and that will craft the stone seed for us. So actually a fairly easy recipe. And in fact, we might be able to start growing redstone. We've got three and we need four, but if we can find one more piece of redstone, we could potentially start growing it fairly soon. Again, combined with the uh, the elite botany pots, I think that could come in quite quick. So uh, the infusion altar, I don't think is gonna be that expensive. It's not. It does require one turkey essence with four stone and two gold, easy enough. And then I believe we need eight pedestals along with that. And that's why we're gonna need even more of that uh, tertium essence. That is fine. We have the infusion crystal ready to go and we have more than enough prudentium to make one two three four five six seven more tertium essence then let's go ahead craft up two three four five six seven and eight nice so let's put these down i guess for now right about here and you'll see it does give you a little indication of where these need to go but you place them in a circle around the altar and once you have all of those down including that one then all we need to do is place down that four inferium one two three and four along with the four stone any kind of stone will work do we have some deep slate we do so we'll use one two three four deep slate and then in the middle we just need that prosperity seed which we should be able to make like so uh, we don't have a single wheat seed that is problematic we probably should have tried to grow the one that we had into more wheat seeds before we used it to make that uh that one inferior seed earlier that is not ideal now chat makes a good point here that we do have access to the market from farming for blockheads this is a very useful block you can uh, place it down and uh, a villager will appear behind it there he is this is uh, Seopolis Steve Seeds and Feeds. That's quite the uh, the tongue twister there. Seopolis Steve Seeds and Feeds. There he is. And uh, if we get some emeralds, we should be able to uh, to trade those emeralds in for seeds. Oh no, he wants bee books. Interesting. So Ben has uh, customized the cost here to require the in-game currency. That is fine. We've got a ton of bee books. We can go ahead and uh, just purchase some uh, wheat seeds here. I'll buy a few of them. And then uh, I think what we'll do is we'll put one of these into uh, a botany pot for the time being we are full up on cactus and so uh, what i might do real quick is uh, grab another uh, storage drawer here place it down like so and then just move the botany pot over by one to uh, to start making wheat and uh, i'm going to delete all of this excess cactus here because again we do have 2000 cactus in this drawer i don't think the uh you know nine or ten stacks of extra cactus there were really going to be that useful to us and so uh, instead if we grab some dirt and if we quickly grab a hoe, we can then place the dirt in here with the seed. And the reason we need the hoe is that the dirt, I believe, runs at like 1x speed. 
Whereas if you change it to farmland, it runs at uh, a whopping 1.05x speed, which is not much of a difference, but it is like a 5% faster growth rate. So over time, that will add up to, uh, to faster seeds. You'll see farmland there is a 1.05x. So 5% uh, faster, completely fine. Chat does make a good point, actually, that uh, this is not the correct draw because it is going to produce both wheat and seeds. And so, in fact, we do want to make sure that we have a, a two by one drawdown instead of a one by one. So if we just do something like this and place that down, that should fill up with uh, both wheat and wheat seeds. And of course, if we need it in a hurry, we can just take some of our bones, craft those into bone meal, and then uh, bone meal that until it's grown. And that's going to make that a fair bit faster. Nice. So now that we have the wheat seed, let's craft up that uh, prosperity seed. Let's place that over on here, like so. And you'll see there, it does say that we're gonna make deep slate seeds. Oh, interesting. It says on here, like if you click on the stone seed, it shows deep slate as being optional, like as an option we can use, but then there are also deep slate seeds. Are there diorite seeds? There aren't. Okay, so let's see if we have like diorite or andesite. We do, one, two, three, four. Let's swap out the deep slate here for, uh, for diorite, I did not know that uh, deep slate seeds were specifically a thing, but if we do one, two, three, and four, thankfully it does tell you what you're gonna make, which I think is also uh, new. The only thing left to do is to get a redstone signal of any kind, a button will do the trick, place that down and right click, at which point the infusion crafting will begin. It doesn't take too long. And once it's done, we have a stone seed. Nice. So now let's go ahead and uh, pick this guy back up. Let's grab that uh, storage drawer that we just put away. And if we place that down, we should now be able to use it to grow our stone seeds. So let's again grab a dirt. I think regular dirt will work for the stone seed here. Never mind, it totally won't. We need to have, at the very least, Inferium farmland, which is faster, 1.1x as opposed to, uh, to 1x there. And you can make higher tier farmland all the way up to uh, Supremium, which is 1.3x. Uh, the speed of, uh, of regular dirt. I don't think though that uh, inferior dirt is that hard to make. Is it this or this? Neither, okay, inferior. Actually, I think you can just, hold on. If I take one of these and one of these, do I put this in like that, hoe it to be farmland, take it out, and then we can craft it with the inferior? We can to get inferior farmland, nice. Okay, we'll put that back in. We'll put in the stone seed, and then we should see this growing into stone, hopefully somewhat quick. I don't know what the elite, like, uh, I don't know what the speed is of the elite hopping botany pot. Like, I don't know how much faster it is than a regular hopping botany pot. Chat is also making a good point here in that we do need uh, at least a four slot draw because there are three outputs on this seed. Thankfully, we do have those four slot draws ready to go in the system. So a quick look at Curse Forge, and it looks like the Elite is two times faster and gives you two times the output. So you get more output and it's twice as fast. The Ultra gives you it six times faster and six times the output, and then the Creative is 10 times faster and 10 times the output. So these are actually quite good. I think what we're gonna wanna do though, these are also still not, it's not fast enough currently, even though it is faster than it would have been in a regular hopping botany pot. I think what we're probably going to do is obviously take this and bring it into the uh, the compact machine here. And I think what we'll do is we will maybe line them up along the top, maybe up in the up on the wall here. We'll start with a few. I'll make a few more, I think, maybe three or five. And, uh, and we'll see how it goes. We'll also grab one of our crafters. And by that, I mean, we'll make another one of these crafters here, the crafting automat, so that we can send all of the stone essence to the crafting automat and then use it to craft up cobblestone, which I believe was this, it is. And then we could of course take that cobblestone and uh, send it to its own drawer and then pipe it around to all of the crucibles to make our lava. And uh, it's really just a question of how many of these elite hopping botany pots we need to get enough cobblestone to keep all of our lava going. And we might actually need more lava than we're currently making because right now our only source of power is this compression dynamo. But I think as of the last episode, we are getting a little close to, uh, to saturating all of that power, to using all of that power. And so it might not be a terrible idea for us to look at getting a few magmatic dynamos. These are essentially the same thing. Uh, normally the compression dynamo can't use lava. That's something that's been added specifically for this pick. But uh, the magmatic dynamo is a dynamo that can turn lava into power. 
and I believe it's more efficient at doing so than the compression dynamo. So we should probably replace this one with a magnetic dynamo, and then we can obviously add more magnetic dynamos to generate more power if we need it going forward. But again, of course, that is going to require even more lava. And so real quick, I'm going to go ahead and make uh, even more of these stone seeds, even more of these elite hopping botany pots. And let's see if we can't get uh, a good amount of cobblestone being made. Okay, so we have a very basic setup here. We've got three of the uh, elite hopping botany pots. Each one has inferior farmland and each one has a stone seed. Those are all pulling down into this spruce drawer here, which has been locked and currently has the uh, essence the fertilized essence, and you can get more stone seeds as a byproduct here as well. So we do have four extra should we need them. Uh, we've also got the crafting ultimate and the redstone clock. So in here, if we do something like this, we've taught it that it wants to make cobblestone. We can then set this here to extract. We probably do want to make a new pipe upgrade for that, even though they're not coming in super fast. Also, I do want to make sure that uh, I have a drawer at the front, not like that at the front for the cobblestone to go into like that. And again, we will make sure that that is locked to cobblestone, even though I don't think that's going to be a problem for us uh, at any point in the future. Uh, this does need a pipe upgrade, actually, because it has to be whitelisted to only allow cobblestone to be extracted. Otherwise, we run into the problem that we are currently running into, and that is all of the stuff uh, that we don't want filling up this, uh, this inventory here. So real quick, add stone essence, submit, and then we can go ahead and put all of these back in up here. Fantastic. So now cobblestone is being made, and the question is whether or not it's being made fast enough. So if we make some more pipes, we then need to, and we'll also make another pipe upgrade whilst we're here, but we can then extract from this drawer down and, uh, and to all of the pipes that are currently connected to the system. All of the pipes should be interconnected already, and so I think we can probably just do something like that. Set this to extract apply the ultimate pipe upgrade, make sure that's set to round robin, so it distributes the cobblestone evenly amongst all of the crucibles, and yeah, as you can see, I think, well, all of the cobblestone is going to get taken quite quickly, but then it is going to take a little while for all of the crucibles to burn that cobblestone, and so you'll see it's kind of slowed down now in how fast it's taking it, but yeah, no, I think it's still not really fast enough to keep up. Everything is working here, but I think it is going to be worth adding a few more botany pots to the mix. And especially given that we're already getting the seeds, like we already have extra cobblestone seeds available to us, all we really have to do is make a few more of the botany pots here, which really shouldn't be too difficult for us. So I guess we're going to make two more because we have uh, the pots required to make two more here. And, uh, and we'll see how that holds up. If it doesn't hold up, then uh, we're going to be in trouble, I guess. And we can also try changing the farmland to be a higher tier as well. Right now, we've got the ability to make up to tertium. So we can make tertium essence. And so we could, if we wanted to, upgrade our inferior farmland up to tertium farmland, which I believe would take it from 1.1x speed to 1.2x speed. We could also look at potentially getting the, um, the Imperium infusion crystal as well. That is something that we have the ability to do. Palmy wants to use all of the 500 uses here before we use this crystal to make the next year of crystal, but I think that's going to be a little wasteful just because I don't want to waste, I don't want to turn all of my inferior into higher tier essences because we might need the lower tier essences. And so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use it, even though it is a little wasteful here, we can use this to craft up to the next tier. I'm fairly certain that you can use higher tier. I really thought you could use higher tier crystals to do lower tier crafts, but it turns out that that is my bad. That is not the case at all. Chad does make a good point here that you can downcraft all of the uh, essences to their previous essence. So there's really no downside to crafting, for example, all of our Inferium up into Prudentium, then all of our Prudentium up into Tertium. And then from here, we can craft all of our uh, Tertium up into Imperium and then potentially Supremium if we have enough. All right, so I've crafted all of our Inferium essence into Prudentium and all of the Prudentium into tertium. We actually don't have that much. We've got a stack and 20 tertium essence here, and we're going to craft it all into imperium essence. Uh, only 21 there, which is not a ton. So now we could use four of these, which would leave us with um, 17. We could use four of them to make the imperium infusion crystal, and then we could use that to craft up some supremium. So we could, in theory, get three supremium essence and use that to make our soil faster, but I don't know if it's worth the cost. The Supreme Essence is, is so expensive. Um, if we look at the farmland, the 
Tertium, the tier 3 farmland, I believe is 1.2x the speed, whereas the Supremium is only 1.3x. So it's a 10% bump, but it requires so much essence to go from Tertium up to Supremium that I really don't think it's worth it. And so I think what we'll probably do here is we'll just take the Tertium and use that in place of the uh, Inferium farmland that we currently have, and then we'll also add the two extra botany pots that we've just made, and we'll see if that's enough to uh, to satisfy the ravenous demand for cobblestone that our base currently has. So we are backing up on lava. This tank here is just filled up there at the top. So, and then now we're gonna start backing up, I believe, on all of these crucibles as well. So I think currently we are producing more cobblestone than the base needs, not by a ton. And um, it's possible that if we were to turn, for example, the, uh, the netherrack organic matter back online, we turned that off earlier, that uh, we might start to see this lava usage like surpass what we're currently making. So we might just be on the brink of what is acceptable, but it's possible we can always make more of these in the future. They're not particularly expensive, but uh, let's head back here and let's take a look. So all of this looks fine. Do we have what it takes to make at least one magmatic dynamo? The answer is no, but I don't think it should be too bad, uh, too difficult for us to get there. So over here, how is our tree fluid extraction going? It is going just fine. Let's grab a regular old Minecraft bucket and uh, let's see if we can't get some more of this uh, cured rubber. Four is all we need. And then uh, whilst we're waiting for that to smelt up, which is not gonna take long because this furnace is very quick, but uh, we can grab some Electrum and, uh, and throw that into the old multi-server press here. We do need one Electrum gear. And then I think we also needed uh, four Electrum plates. That is indeed correct. It's gonna be the same machine as well. Temporarily, we can do something like this just to make it that tiny little bit faster. And once we have four of those, let's grab that cured rubber. Let's craft that into a block form just as soon as we put some of the other junk here back into our uh, inventory because we do not have that much space. Can we make the machine frame? We can. Can we make the magmatic dynamo? We can. Nice. So I've been told by the Twitch chat that this is more efficient at using the lava. So it's going to use less lava to make the same amount of power. So it should be the same 640, but I think it's going to use less lava to do it. So if we put that here and we put the same augments back in, again, 640 redstone flux per tick. I assume that the efficiency is the same, like the number, yeah, it's still 73. Yeah, as you can see here in JEI, for the compression dynamo, 1,000 millibuckets of lava produces 10,000 redstone flux. Whereas with the magmatic dynamo, that same 1,000 millibuckets of lava produces 100,000 redstone flux. So 10 times as much power. So we're not actually getting more power. It's still only producing a maximum of 640, but it's just 10 times more efficient. And so effectively, this is using 10 times less lava to do the same job that the compression dynamo is doing. And therefore, I guess also in theory, we could put 10 of these down and that would use the same amount of lava that the compression dynamo is doing to produce 10 times as much power, which is kind of crazy, but also hopefully just in the short term means that we uh, we need even less lava, which hopefully means that our cobblestone is, uh, is now even more well-equipped than it was mere moments ago. Now, as I mentioned a second ago, we do also have redstone uh, coming in now as well, thanks to our system coming back online. And if we wanted to, we could look at making redstone seeds. It's just four redstone, one, two, three, four. And uh, you can put these anywhere you want, by the way, there's no specific order. So long as all the items are on all the pedestals, it, uh, it will work just fine. Uh, as far as redstone seeds are concerned, I think it was tertium essence. It is, yeah. And we of course have a bunch of Imperium here that we can craft down into tertium. And so if we do uh, one, two, three, and four, like that, with another prosperity seed, it's always a prosperity seed in the middle, boom. That's gonna give us a redstone seed and all of these seeds work in exactly the same way. You take the redstone seed, you can place it into a hopping botany pot that will produce redstone essence. And then we can use that redstone essence to craft redstone. And so going forward, we could quite plausibly get rid of the sifting system. If we can get, for example, tin seeds and copper seeds and even coal seeds, at that point, we would no longer need the organic matter. We could just grow those three resources. And at that point, this system here becomes unuseful and we can get rid of it and just free up some space on the platform. And so it's possible we might look at, uh, at some point in the near future to kind of pivoting over to uh, to using seeds to grow some of our key resources, especially ones that we're gonna be needing a lot of. And that then frees up some of the blocks underneath these barrels to be used to make higher tiers of organic matter, which we can use to push even further and get even more resources. But 
Now that we've taken care of the cobblestone problem, and now that the power problem is kind of temporarily fixed, I have a feeling that we are still pretty close to using the full 614 redstone flux per tick here, especially when uh, everything is online. That shouldn't be too big of a problem because of course we can just make another magmatic dynamo uh, should we need it. But what I want to do now is pivot over and start working on refined storage because this is gonna make our lives so much easier. All of the crafts, all of the micro crafts that we currently have to do uh, to make things like the magmatic dynamo, crafting those machine frames, crafting all of the cured rubber and then smelting into dry rubber, all of that could be automated with refined storage. And so all we'll have to do in the future is request that a machine frame be crafted for us and the system will do all of the work, which is gonna be fantastic for us and also I think essential uh, to completing the pack because some of the late game quests here do require a lot of crafting and I don't really want to do it manually. So in order to get started with refined storage, uh, over in the quest book here, we have a refined storage quest line. The first quest is to make a prosperity ingot. That's four prosperity shards with one iron nugget. That is not going to be a problem. Prosperity ingot. I do think we're going to need quite a few of these. I'll make a stack. Right from the get-go here, we have a lot of prosperity shards and we have 5,000 iron, so we're not really low on either of those. And in this pack, the way that we get silicon, which is needed for basically everything in refined storage, is we take those prosperity ingots, craft them down into prosperity nuggets, like so, and then we place those prosperity nuggets into a fluid encapsulator, another machine from thermal expansion, along with molten silicon. And molten silicon we get by breaking down sand in a magma crucible. Now, I do believe we already have a magma crucible. We do indeed. We made it in a previous episode, so we can always go ahead and hijack that. The fluid encapsulator is a bucket, another machine frame, two prosperity ingots, two copper gears, and a redstone flux coil. All right, boom, there is a machine frame, and boom, there is our fluid encapsulator. Nice. So let's place that down right about here next to our magma crucible. And then do we have any sand? We do, nice. We can place that into the magma crucible and we can make sure that the right side there is set to output. And then here we'll make sure the left side is set to input. We'll put auto input on, we'll put auto output on. That's gonna go ahead and pull the molten silicon over, at which point we can place in our prosperity nuggets like so. And that is gonna begin making for us some silicon. Just as soon as we get power into this thing, uh, that is my bad, I did not set this to extract. There we go. And that's probably why I have the pipe upgrade in my inventory. Fantastic. All right, that should be working. And uh, people in chat, make a fantastic point, and that is that we should make a silicon seed. And uh, we're probably gonna end up making a lot of seeds going forward here because now we can take four silicon, craft it with four prudentium essence and one prosperity shard seed to make a silicon seed. At that point, we can make silicon essence, and that is infinite silicon. Uh, someone made a good point uh, in that we can also do the same thing for the cured rubber. There's a rubber seed. If we type in a rubber seed, this one here, is uh, just four of this cured rubber. You can craft it. We can start growing rubber essence. Once we have rubber essence, that's cured rubber taken care of, at which point we no longer need this tree fluid extractor set up to make our machine frames in the future, which is, is gonna be fantastic, um, especially given how much of the silicon we're going to need to get refined storage up and running. I think it's a no brainer here for us to craft up this silicon seed. And of course we do have our time in a bottle on us. And so we can use that as a way of getting a large amount of, uh, of silicon incredibly quickly. So one, two, three, and four, with again, the prosperity seed in the middle. Like I said, these definitely are not gonna go to waste. Once that is done, we are then going to need another botany pot. And um, the current bottleneck for us, in terms of botany pots, is just clay. Of course, the botany pots are exclusively clay. They're made from terracotta and flower pots. Uh, terracotta, we have a fair amount of, but um, clay and brick, we have none of. And we also don't have any dust lying around the dust block that is so making more clay is um is a little tricky although i guess we can just grab like a stack of sand and our good old-fashioned hammer and just break this sand down into dust and then of course we can place our dust into our little uh, clay maker and that makes the uh just a very large amount of clay incredibly quickly for us in fact probably more clay than we're going to need that's so many botany pots let's throw a stack in here those are going to smelt up nice and fast. As per usual, we can just take our uh, time in a bottle here and do something like that. And that's going to make that even faster, an insanely fast furnace. Uh, let's clear out our inventory just a little bit. I will keep the pipes wrench because that is, uh, is quite a useful item to have. But once we have all of the brick, 
fantastic. We can then craft that into a ton of flower pots. And once we have a ton of flower pots, we can craft those into a bunch of botany pots. And from there, of course, we can craft those into elite botany pots. And then hopping elite botany pots. Nice. And so now, if we want to grow something, we can take a draw. We can place it down. Uh, once again, we can get some more of the uh, the farmland. People did point out a, a very good point, and that is that you can actually uh, do this way easier than I was doing it earlier. If you do something like this, you can just craft the farmland as opposed to placing the dirt down, hoeing it, and then taking it out again. And then if we put one of these down here, this guy in like so, and we grab our silicon seed, we can place him in like this. Again, uh, I keep doing this incorrectly, but this does need to be a, a two by two draw because again, we are going to get the three outputs, those being silicon essence, silicon seeds, and fertilized essence. So boom, there we go. Let's place the seed in and we can time in a bottle there. So we can do something like that, make it 64 times its base speed. Look at that, 20, 22, 24. It's just gonna grow and produce a ton of silicon essence, which we can then take and craft into silicon. Nice, a nice easy stack of silicon that doesn't involve us going and waiting for the thermal expansion machines. So now that's taken care of, let's claim our rewards here. Fantastic. Next up on the list is processor binding. This is made with prismarine crystals, prismarine shards, and silicon. Silicon we've got taken care of, and of course, prismarine crystals and shards. We've got a ton of them thanks to our sifting earlier in the pack. And so boom, and boom. Let's go ahead and get, I feel like we might as well get a stack of uh, processor binding here. Fantastic, we're going to need again quite a bit of that because in order to make each of these processes, you have to craft them in the induction smelter with processor binding. So uh, the different processes are the raw basic, raw improved, raw advanced, and raw neural. Uh, you then smelt those into basic, improved, advanced, and neural processes. And then we can use those to craft a ton of stuff going forward. So I think what I am probably gonna do just to make our lives a bit easier here is I'm gonna craft like a stack of each of these. So do we have Redstone, we do not. Okay, so that is fine. We can take a draw and we can uh, dedicate another one of our botany pots here to those redstone seeds that we made earlier. So we'll throw you down here. And again, we will probably move these at some point in the near future chat. I'm probably not just gonna have a line of them along the wall here, but uh, for the time being, if we do this and this, we can get our redstone seed up and running. And once again, we can use our time in a bottle here to make that nice and fast. And then we can take that to craft up our redstone. Nice. So um, a stack of redstone is going to be useful here. We're going to need so much redstone, but again, that's not going to be a problem. Let's take a stack of redstone, a stack of iron, and a stack of the processor binding. We can throw all three of those over into the induction smelter. Boom, boom, and boom. And again, with a little help from both the integral component and our good old friend time in a bottle, we should be able to make a, a stack of raw basic processes very quickly. And then we'll do the same for the others here. They're all the same recipe. You just swap out iron for gold, and then you can swap out gold for diamonds, and you can swap out diamonds for... Oh, this one's made with all three of them. Interesting. I don't know what we need the neural processes for. Oh, they're for the higher tier crafters. Interesting. We are probably going to want to get a few higher tier crafters, so it might be worth looking at making a couple of those uh, neural processes. But uh, for now, let's just see about getting a stack of raw and advanced processes, and then we'll work from there. All right, and there we go. There is our stack of raw and improved processes. Nice. Okay, so next up on the list, I guess we'll make, let's claim our rewards here for one, and then I'll make a few of these. I don't want to make a ton of them because I don't know how many of them we're going to need, but let's do like, Maybe eight of each to make eight neural processes. We can always make more in the future should we need them, but we'll do that. And then I'm pretty sure what we have to do is just smelt these. Oh no, we done. Interesting. Okay, so in this pack, it has been tweaked. In order to make the advanced processor, the basic and the improved, I assume they all, yeah, they do all have to be uh, run through the induction smelter with silicon and redstone. So we are going to need even more silicon and even more redstone. Thankfully, those are the two things that we are growing over here so that really shouldn't be too much of a problem although we are running a little low on redstone we're using it way too fast we do still have more time in our bottle here even though we have used about two hours worth of time just accelerating redstone alone um, again thankfully this will run uh, continuously between streams and hopefully we can come back to a fair amount of, uh, of all of the essences that we're going to need uh, we are going to need some destruction and construction cores as well as basic processes at some point in the near future but that's um, a problem for futurizing. I'm not too worried about that just yet. Uh, let's craft up yet more silicon. 
Let's clear out our inventory just a little bit. And we'll craft up some more redstone. And let's see if we can't get a few of these into their final processor form. All right, so I've made 16 of each of those. That's all of those quests complete. Good stuff, you love to see it. Uh, we could put all of these back into the system for the time being. We'd always be carrying these around in our inventory at all times. That is not necessary. Let's claim all of our free B-Books and of course some more improved processes as well. You love to see it. And now we can actually start to look at actually setting up some, uh, some refined storage works here. So uh, we are going to need quite a bit of quartz enriched iron. This is again made in the induction smelter, this time with regular old iron and regular old nether quartz. Both of those go in. We're going to need quite a bit of this. I'll probably try and make a few stacks of, um, of quartz enriched iron here. It's really not too expensive. And again, especially given that we have uh, so much iron and so much nether quartz, we can make uh, quite a bit of this fairly easily. And I think it is going to be worth just making it in bulk ahead of time so we don't have to keep coming back and, uh, and making small batches of it every time we need a little bit more. All right, so uh, I think six stacks or thereabouts should be uh, a good start for us here. Now we have the ability to make refined storage cable, which uh, much like the cable from a simple storage network is just used to connect everything in the refined storage network together. Fantastic. We can make more of that as and when we need it. And then now there are a few things that we need. We need to make a machine casing. This is made, it is made with a machine frame from thermal expansion. That is kind of fine. It does mean that we're going to need a lot of electrum and we're going to have to process that electrum into electrum gears and electrum plates. So let's take uh, maybe a stack or two of gold and we don't have that much silver, so I guess one stack of gold and one stack of silver. In fact, I might as well do half a stack of each, and we'll put those in over here. Give that a quick uh, bottle tap to make it a little faster. Uh, that should be fine. I don't think we're going to need tons of machine casing. We need one for the controller. We need one for the disk drive. We need one for the crafting grid. And then we need one for our first crafter. So I think for today, we're only really going to need four of these. So that should be... Fine. Boom and boom. Let's take one, two, three, four, five of those. Fantastic. And let's start by making uh, at least one, two, three, four of these. We've got the ability to make one more should we need it if I've forgotten anything. But uh, the beating heart of the refined storage system is, of course, the controller. This is pretty easy. Three silicon, four quartz and iron, an advanced processor, and a machine casing. Unlike the controller from Simple Storage Networks, which we have over here, uh, this one does require a constant supply of power. Um, and so that's why I'm, I'm thinking it's possible we might start to run into power problems, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Next up, we need a drive, this guy right here. Again, super easy. We are just missing, uh, of all things, a regular Minecraft chest. If we do something like this, we can make a stack of Minecraft chests, and then we don't have to think about it for the foreseeable future. Next up is the grid. This is basically refined storage's version of the request table. It's gonna allow us to access all of the items in our refined storage system. This does require uh, one construction and one destruction core. The construction and destruction cores are both made using the raw basic processor, but then instead of using silicon and redstone, you use nether quartz and redstone and glowstone and nether quartz. Okay, that is fine. Glowstone, nether quartz, and redstone, as well as some of the basic processes. Again, I will make a few of each of these just because I'm pretty sure we are going to need them over here for making the crafters, the importers, and the exporters, which we are going to need uh, to replace some of our um, importers and exporters from the Simple Storage Network mod. So there's eight of each. We'll take all of those. We'll claim our rewards, which does give us even more of them. Fantastic. That should allow us to make our grid. It does. And uh, the regular grid just allows you to take items out. It doesn't allow you to craft. And that's why I think it's almost always worth upgrading to the crafting grid, uh, especially given that I don't think it's going to be too difficult for us. It's not. It's one crafting table and one advanced processor. Boom. Fantastic. We'll claim our rewards for that as well. And so now that we have this, we do kind of have what it takes to set up a basic refined storage system. Although I think for us in particular, an external storage is also going to be necessary. Again, super easy. Quarter rich iron, destruction core, construction core, processor, cable, chests, boom. This is going to allow us to connect up our storage drawers to our refined storage system. So let's get rid of the request table. We're not going to need that going forward. We didn't really need it to begin with because we still have access to our crafting remote. Let's replace that with the crafting grid, like so. 
We then need to connect that up to our controller. So what we'll do is we'll get rid of this guy. And I don't want to get rid of the storage network route just yet. I don't want to get rid of that until we've kind of fully moved over to refined storage. And so temporarily, I'm going to put the controller like here, but we'll probably end up placing it exactly where the uh, storage network route is when the time comes. Let's go ahead and grab some more energy pipe. And let's see if we can't run some energy pipe over to the, uh, the draw controller to start getting power to it. So once that is connected up, we can see in here how much power it's using. Right now it's using four uh, redstone flux per tick. So not too much, but as we add more uh, to the refined storage network, it will start to use more and more and more, which is uh, it's definitely going to spiral at some point. Now, we need to connect up our external storage to the draw controller. Now currently, our storage network route is connected to the bottom. Now eventually I do want to put the external storage from refined storage there, but in a very janky and very temporary solution kind of way, I'm gonna do something like this and just run this up and around to this controller. It's real janky, but it's also real temporary chat. So we're gonna do something like that. That's going to allow the refined storage system to access everything that is in our storage doors, which is cool. So now what I want to do is I wanna get down this, uh, this disk drive. And so I think what I'm probably gonna do is I'm probably gonna move some of these drawers. Uh, specifically, I'll move this one here, and then we'll put our first disk drive here. For the sake of symmetry, even though we don't have a second disk drive yet, um, I'm gonna go ahead and make another disk drive and put it there, even though we don't necessarily need one at this very moment in time. Um, I think that is the right one, it is indeed. And then let's put this one, uh, let's say over here, like that. Um, and so now we have space for our second disk drive, which we should be able to make with relative ease, we can. We'll drop that down here. And for those who don't know, the way this works is that refined storage has a bunch of disks. So if I type in storage disk, refined storage adds a ton of them, starting with 1K, going all the way up to 64K, and then extra storage adds ones that go all the way up to 16,384K, which is 16,384,000 uh, items. So uh, each one refers to how many items it can hold. So a 1K storage disk, can hold 1,000 items, 4K, 4,000, uh, 64K, 64,000, and again, the 16384K can hold 16,384,000 items inside of it. The idea being that uh, if we go ahead and put this storage disk in here, we now have the ability to place items into the system without the need for these chests. We can get rid of these and just store items inside of the disk and then access it from the crafting grid. Now, much like with the simple storage network, we wanna make sure that the external storage here is set to a higher priority. So we'll set this to like a priority of 100, and then we'll set the disk drives here to a priority of like negative 100, just to make sure that any item that we put into the system tries to go into a storage drawer first, if there is a storage drawer for it, and then if it can't go into a storage drawer, it will then try and go into the, uh, the disk drive. That's the idea. Now, the disks, I don't think, are particularly difficult to make, in fact, there is a quest, I believe, for us to make the 1K storage part, which we'll go ahead and do. It's four silicon, three glass, one redstone, and one quartz enriched iron. Boom. If you wanna make the 4K part, it is just three 1K parts with four basic processes. Again, the uh, quartz and the redstone. So let's make three of those, and then let's try and make one of those. Fantastic. You get the idea, you can then use uh, three of those to make the 16K, but again, this one requires the improved processor, and then the same for the 64. Now, I actually don't know how many items we have in here. It's quite a few, and it's probably more than 5,000. So I might see if we can't get a 16K disc here. It is gonna be a little expensive. We need six more of, of these guys. And it looks like glass is in fact the thing that we're missing. We could definitely do with some kind of sand generation system, because I think right now we're not really making the sand fast enough. Now, uh, one thing we can do here, by the way, as well, is you can make a factory augment for, um, for this furnace which does mean that it uses power, but it also smelts just so much faster. The, uh, the factory augment requires one more piece of paper, as well as a regular Minecraft piston. But if you stick the factory augment in, it, uh, it no longer requires fuel, which is why it threw out the, uh, the coal there. But now it's got four slots at the top. We can turn auto split on with the little S button, and that's gonna evenly divide whatever you put amongst those four slots. From there, if we just run some of the uh, energy cable over to it, it should, I think, be a significant 
speed upgrade over what we were doing previously, it should be, I think, four times faster. So it's quite possible this is currently using more power than, uh, than we have. Again, our power situation not particularly great at the moment, but that did smell pretty quickly there. Uh, if we wait till it's full, and then we drop some more sand in here, you can see that it's quite fast. It is quite fast. It is definitely using uh, more power than we have. But it looks like we are able to smelt a half stack of sand without running out. And in fact, we can probably do a full stack without it running out either, which is very nice indeed. So uh, let's see, once again, if we go back to storage disks here, can we make six of these? We can. And then two more of these. And then one of these. Fantastic. And again, if you want to make a 64K disk, you'd need three of those. And then 256 is 364s, and 1024 is three 256s. You get the idea. It goes all the way down. Uh, eventually, when you want to craft it into a disk, all you have to do is craft it with redstone, glass, and quartz enriched iron. Place that into here, and you can see that we now have 17,000 items worth of storage. And so hopefully, if we just start taking all of the items out of here and placing them into our refined storage system, we should, I think, be able to get rid of basically everything and, and store it inside of our disk drives. And there we go, these are all empty. And it looks like I, uh, I vastly overestimated how much stuff we have. Uh, we had 5,000, approximately 5,000 items in total, but now it means we've got uh, extra space. You know, we've got extra 12,000 worth of, uh, of space there for extra items, should we wish to, uh, to put them in in the future. Now, the final thing that we need, or kind of the final thing we need in order to make the refined storage a replacement for the simple storage network is, of course, the remote. Right now, we can use the crafting remote to access everything from our simple storage network. If we get the wireless crafting grid, this guy here, from refined storage, we can use that to wirelessly access everything inside of our refined storage system, which includes everything connected to the system via external storages, in that case, everything connected in our storage drawer system. So the wireless crafting grid doesn't look too expensive, although apparently we have none of the items required, although that's probably because now all of our uh, quartz enriched iron is inside of the refined storage system. So uh, in fact, the only thing we're missing is a regular old crafting grid, which we do have. So we could take the one we have out of the wall, but I do like to have one uh, in the wall just in case. And so uh, we'll just make another one of these here. We'll take this guy, craft him up like so, and then boom, that is our wireless crafting grid. Just like before, we need to right click this onto the controller to link it, I believe. Uh, once that is linked, it just needs power. Now, this is where things could get a little tricky because we don't currently have a way of charging this, I don't believe. I'm being told by the pack creator that this right here, the Tinker's Workbench, is uh, is what we need. Use it to augment, charge, and fill items. This guy is pretty easy to make. We need a crafting table. Again, I've got to start using uh, this over here because we currently have all of our stuff in there. Let's make a redstone flux coil and a crafting table and boom. So if I place this down, let's say here, um, I will get rid of this and we'll put down another energy pipe because I assume it is gonna require some kind of energy in order to actually uh, charge this. So we'll take one of those, place it down like so, drop it down here. That's gonna start to fill up, interesting. And if I place this in, it charges, nice. Okay, so it's not an ideal system because unlike the crafting remote, this will run out of charge. It's got 3,200 FE in it, and eventually this will run out, which is not ideal, but at some point, hopefully in the fairly near future, uh, we can start to look at the Flux Networks mod, this one right here, which allows us to start wirelessly charging our devices and wirelessly moving power around using the Flux plugs and the Flux points. This does require that we first get a lot more obsidian. Right now we have basically none, and we need Flux dust, which requires dimensional shards, which we now can make because we have the infusion crafting, but we've not gotten that far just yet. So we'll look at doing that, I think, in the next episode. For now, what we can do, options, controls, key bindings, and wireless. We can change the key binding for the wireless crafting grid. By default, it is set to control G. If we change that to Z, I like to have Z, but you can change it to whatever you want. Um, I'm then gonna get rid of the uh, other conflicts there. But now, so long as we have the wireless crafting grid in our inventory, we can press Z, and it will open up our refined storage system. The reason ours didn't work is that as you'll see in the chat, there is no wireless transmitter in range. And so the final piece of the puzzle here 
is getting down a wireless transmitter. The wireless transmitter is pretty easy to make, but does require that fifth machine casing that I made just in case earlier in the stream. Let's go ahead and put that down. Uh, for now, right about here again, we're probably gonna move the controller. The trouble with the wireless transmitter is that it does have a limited range. We can make this range bigger using a range upgrade, this guy right here, which is not too expensive. It is a little expensive given that I don't think it increases the range by a ton. Again, 16 blocks is not loads. By the way, now if I press Z, it does open this up, even though this is not on my hotbar. And in fact, you can even put this into a curious slot. So you can kind of take it out of your inventory entirely and still access everything wherever you want. And in fact, we can get rid of this remote now and dump all of this away. But uh, 16 blocks, not too far. This is actually out of range. So ideally, I think we are going to want at least one of these range add-ons, but I think each one only gives you an additional eight blocks and you can only put four of these in here. So yeah, that takes up to 24, which is a little better, but it's still not going to cover the entirety of the, uh, the platform. If we're over here, we're now out of range. So I think one more should do it and should give us full platform coverage, but unlike the uh, remote from Simple Storage Network, it's not going to give us the like super overpowered, infinite range, cross-dimensional goodness, at least not until we make some higher tier upgrades. There's an infinity range booster that we can make once we get our first nether star. That's gonna give us infinite range. And then there's the dimensional card, which allows you to access it across different dimensions. And so if we want to get that same functionality, it's gonna be um, quite expensive to get there. And the Twitch chat is telling me that these are also very power hungry cards as well. In fact, if we look here, we're already using uh, 28 FE per tick, which is not a ton, but uh, as we go forward, adding cards like the infinity range booster and like the dimension card are gonna take this 28 RF per tick up into the thousands of, of RF per tick. Of course, if we wanted to, uh, what we could do here is that uh, we could take the range upgrade out. We could take the uh, wireless transmitter. Our base is not that big and we do have, um, I've taken it down now so I can't access the, uh, the system wirelessly, but uh, we do of course have cable and uh, we can make more of the refined storage cable and we could just move the transmitter to the center of the island, right? If we take a stack of cable and uh, we run this down and underneath somewhere like this if we put it down like that and then give it the same range add-on that gives us 24 blocks in each direction i think from the um from the wireless access point and so i think in theory that should give us full platform coverage not quite like but almost almost full platform coverage which i think for now is going to be fine if we decide to make the platform bigger in the future, we could always go and add an extra network card. Or in fact, one thing you can do is you can just add another wireless transmitter. That also does work uh, for adding extra coverage to the base. And I think it's actually cheaper to put down an extra uh, wireless access point, at least in terms of continual power cost, than it is to put down, uh, to add more and more range add-ons. But we do now have access to our refined storage system wirelessly. Uh, real quick, I like to have mine set to search mode auto-selected so that when I open it up, I can just start typing and it is uh, auto selected in here. Uh, we also have it uh, set to descending, that's fine. And quantity, this is exactly how I like it. I like to see the item I have the most of at the top and the least of at the bottom. Apparently the uh, Akashic term is the item that we have the least of here. I was looking for my diving suit, but uh, in the newest update, Ben has swapped out the old diving suit for this new one from uh, Thermal Expansion. So we actually don't have this diving suit because uh, our old one got deleted when we updated the pack and we've not made the new one yet. I think that's fine. I don't know if we're necessarily going to need the diving suit going forward, um, but we do now have access to this uh, refined storage system and we're very almost done with the transition. The only thing left to do here would be to replace our importers and exporters with the same importers and exporters from refined storage. They work in the exact same way. Uh, if I go ahead and type in uh, importer, it's this one here and the exporter this one here, we can place those down and connect them to our refined storage system to begin importing and exporting wherever we're currently importing and exporting. But uh, the real benefit to refined storage is in the crafters. The auto crafting is where I think refined storage uh, comes into its own. And it's the reason why I'm putting up with like a worse wireless crafting grid. So there are a few different tiers of crafter that you can make. There is the basic crafter, uh, but then we have extra storage, which adds the iron crafter, gold crafter, diamond crafter, and a netherite crafter. We'll make the regular crafter first, mostly because we have to. Uh, it does require yet another one of these machine casings, which of course is yet more Electrum. Thankfully, we bulk made Electrum 
earlier on. And so we can thankfully make another machine frame here fairly quickly. Boom and boom. So there is our machine casing. Let's make a regular old crafter and we can put this down anywhere. But again, I think what we'll do for the time being is uh, we'll kind of move, let me grab an X out of the system. And uh, let's move this draw here up to here. And we're gonna do a bit of um, reorganizing here. We're gonna move this draw here over to here like that. And then we can put our crafter down like that. And we'll put the other crafter down here or our next crafter here once we have it. Now the, uh, the basic crafter here doesn't have a ton of slots. It has nine, but uh, the idea is that we can use those nine slots for crafting patterns. So in here, we do need a, a pattern grid. That is this guy. Uh, again, not too difficult. Does require the regular grid, which of course requires another machine frame. Boom and boom. That is the machine casing again. That gets us a regular grid and we can craft that into a pattern grid. The pattern grid does require a pattern. The patterns are pretty easy to make. They're quartz enriched iron, glass and redstone. We'll make one for now, although we are going to need many more of them in just a second here. And then I think what we'll do is we'll move this compacting drawer for nickel. We'll put the pattern grid there and then we'll put the nickel drawer over on the end here because these two drawers are, uh, are empty at the moment. And uh, we'll see if we can fill that one up at some point in the future. But uh, now that we have the pattern grid, what we can do is we can teach our system how to make certain recipes. Um, for example, uh, one of the most basic recipes that we can teach, I guess is actually the pattern, right? This one right here. So we'll make a pattern and then we'll place the pattern in here and then we'll teach it by shift clicking to make the pattern. You can also place these in manual either way. So if we wanted to teach our system how to make planks, you could put a login and then click encode. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna teach the system how to make blank patterns encode. Once you have a pattern that's encoded, you can place it into the crafter, and now the system knows how to make that item. So if I type in pattern in here, we don't have any, but you'll see that it shows the item and the option to craft. So now if we click on this, it gives us the option of how many we want to craft. Let's say we wanted to craft 20, start. It'll tell us we're missing five glass, that's a problem. So instead let's say let's make 16, start. And as long as we have everything it takes to make the items, we can click start. And it's going to slowly but surely craft up 16 patterns. Not super fast, not super slow, super useful. Now, we can take this further. There's a few things we can do here. Uh, the first thing we can do is we can make higher tier crafters. Uh, the next tier crafter is really not that difficult. And so I think I will take this pattern out, grab our crafter, and see about crafting it up to an iron crafter. The iron crafter is the same speed as the regular crafter, but instead of having nine slots, it has 27. Quite a bit more. We can go further though. We can craft this into a gold crafter, which is where those know-all processes from earlier finally come into play. We'll take those. Uh, I believe we need more redstone and silicon for that. Again, now these have had time to, uh, to grow on their own and so we can get yet more redstone and yet more silicon. Fantastic. And then let's just throw all of those over into the old induction smelter. Boom, boom, and boom. Once we have at least two of those, we can craft up the gold crafter. This one is five times faster than the regular and the iron crafter and has 45 slots in it. A ton of crafting slots available and it's already faster by default, but we can go further. Next on the list is the diamond crafter. This requires four diamond blocks and two more of those neural processes, but it's 25 times faster than the base crafter and has a whopping 63 slots in it. That's a ton of slots for crafting. And then finally, there is the netherite crafter, which does require four blocks of netherite. However, I think that's not gonna to be too bad for us because we have so much gold and so much netherite scrap. Can we make 36 netherite ingots? I think the answer is definitely yes. There's a stack of netherite ingots. Let's make four netherite blocks, one, two, three, and four. And then let's see if we can't craft that netherite crafter. We totally can, fantastic. So this guy is 125 times faster than the base crafter and it can hold 81 patterns. So a ton of crafting patterns that we can put in here and it is so much faster. Now, uh, again, unfortunately, we don't have the uh, the glass here, but if I make some more glass, we can request some more of those uh, those patterns. Now, if you already have some of the item in, if you click it, it will obviously just take the item out. But uh, if you control shift click, it will then allow you to craft even if you have some of the item there. So you can either take the item out and then click it, or you can hold control shift and left click. And then let's say we request another 16. Never mind. Let's say we request another eight and start. And you'll see that, that was made almost instantly. It made those eight so fast 
because we now have a crafter that is 125 times faster than that initial base crafter. You can make these even faster. Uh, there are slots on the right here where you can put speed upgrades. So we could look at making some speed upgrades and putting those in to make this guy even faster than it already is. Uh, but for now, at least, that really isn't necessary. The 125x speed is completely fine. But uh, basically now, any crafting recipe that we want, we can just teach to our system. So anything we don't want to have to do manually, we can teach. So uh, again, if I wanted to teach it how to make planks, we could do. I could then take it one step further and say, let's say we take those planks and teach it how to make chests. And then we could go one step further and say, hey, let's teach it how to make hoppers. And now going forward, we just don't have to ever make a hopper again. If ever we want hoppers, I think right now we have quite a few of them because I accidentally made some at the beginning. But if I wanted some, I could just go ahead and control shift click and then say I want 10 hoppers, start and start. And it's going to give me 10 hoppers almost instantaneously. The same thing is true with the botany pots from earlier. We can teach our system how to make the flower pots. We can teach it how to make the actual botany pot itself. We can teach it how to upgrade that into an elite botany pot. And then if we wanted to, we could even teach it how to make the hopping elite botany pot, drop all four of those recipes into here. And now if I want more of those hopping elite botany pots, we can go ahead, click start. And if we had the terracotta, it would make it for us. Now you can take this even further with other machines because right now, especially in this mod pack, while this is useful, it's not massively useful because a lot of things in this pack require machines to craft. A lot of the processes that we've been making require machines to craft. So thankfully, refined storage is fine with that. Uh, if we were to get another crafter here, and boom, there's our crafter. So this time, what we can do, uh, we might as well upgrade this to iron uh, because it's very cheap. And you know what? We'll upgrade it to gold because we have the normal processes for it. I don't think we have any more. We don't. So gold is going to have to do for now. But uh, if we were to place the gold crafter on top of the emerald furnace, we do then need to rotate it. I don't think we can rotate it with the pipes wrench. We can't, although refined storage does add its own wrench, which is not too difficult to make. And then we're gonna rotate that to point down to the emerald furnace. And in here, we wanna make sure that the top here is set to input. You can't quite see it because it's hidden off in the top left of the screen there behind the trash can, but this is an input slot. It's uh, the blue slot here. That's fine. Uh, this is gonna be the input. Uh, now we just need to get some cable and we need to connect this up. So let's run this around, down, and over to our pre-existing network cable. This is now online. Now, the final piece of the puzzle here is, um, is gonna be the, the, the need for an importer, but uh, we'll do that in just a second. What we can do now is up in the pattern grid, let's say we wanted to teach our system how to make glass. Currently, you'll see that the processing box is not ticked and the exact box is ticked. Uh, the exact box doesn't need to be ticked, but if we take the processing box, this changes and allows you to input a custom recipe. For example, we can teach our system that one cent equals one glass in code. And then we can place that recipe into this pattern grid. And so basically what we've told the system now is that if you send one sand over here, you will get one glass back. Currently, that's not necessarily true, but it does mean that now if we type in glass into the system, it has a craft option for glass. So let's say we type in five, start and start, it's gonna send five sand over here and produce five glass. The final piece of the puzzle to actually make this work is we need an import cable, this one right here. And if we place that onto, let's say the back of the emerald furnace like that, so long as the back here is set to output, which it's currently not, it's currently set to um, fuel input. But if we change this to be orange, like so, that's gonna then start pulling all of that glass out via the importer round into our system. And so now we have five glass. And again, so now going forward, I want 10 more glass, start and start. It does take a little longer because the importer isn't super fast, but we get 10 glass fairly quickly. We can make this system faster. Again, in the same way that you can make the crafters faster in that we can put speed upgrades into the importer to allow it to pull items in even faster than it is doing currently. But this basic system is what is going to allow us to automate kind of almost everything that we've done up until now. If we get another multi-server press, we can have one that has the gear work in die-in full-time, and we can have a second one that is just used to make plates. Once we have crafters on both of those, we can teach our system how to make uh, Electrum gears. If we have a, a craft on top of the induction smelter, we can teach it how to make Electrum. Then we can use one of the multi-server presses with the gear working die to make Electrum gears. If we have a second multi-server press, we can use that to turn Electrum into Electrum plates. Then we can have our regular crafter over here, craft the Electrum plates, the Electrum gears, 
and the iron into a machine frame from thermal expansion, this recipe right here. And at that point, that's taken care of. We don't have to worry about manually crafting these ever again. The same with the machine casing. We can then take it one step further, teach it how to craft these. We never have to manually craft this ever again. And the same with all of the essences as well. Once we have a large array of essences up and running, we can teach our system how to turn redstone essence into redstone, the item. And then going forward, we can just request that that craft be done for us as opposed to having to manually do it every time we want something. And the super nifty thing is that, as we saw earlier, the refined storage system is capable of knowing if it doesn't have something that it can craft. So if I requested 64 chests and we didn't have enough planks for it, if the system saw that it could make the planks, it will just schedule automatically a request to, to craft those planks. And so it will do the plank crafting first and then the chest crafting. So it will always do all of the crafts required to make the item that you've requested if it knows how to do those crafts. And so, yeah, I think... Next time we'll come back, we'll look at making at least one more multi-server press. Uh, between streams, I'll probably prepare to make a bunch more crafters, uh, as well as some more cables so we can hook all those up. And, uh, and we'll see about getting a lot of crafters down to automate a lot of the machines that we currently have down in the world. We'll also look at uh, replacing all of our importers and exporters with importers and exporters from refined storage. It also means that we can kind of get rid of the structural crafters as well, because we can take these down, teach our system how to make the powders, and then just export those powders to this uh, chest here to, uh, to kind of get rid of this big bulky mess that we currently have with these uh, storage drawers. Don't get me wrong, I like these, but we can make it faster, we can make it smaller, we can make it more efficient. And, uh, and yeah, I think it's gonna be fantastic. Real quick, I do wanna check and see how we're doing on cobblestone. Have we started to back up or are we still kind of on the, uh, the bleeding edge here we are still on the bleeding edge and we're actually out of lava which is probably not too surprising i think we are now using a lot more power than we were previously yeah we're slowly starting to run out here and so i think that uh, that very soon we're actually going to run out of lava completely which is not ideal and so uh, i think what i'll also do between streams is uh, maybe take a few more of those uh, hopping body pots these extra four here and uh, place those down in our compact machine. In fact, you know what? Let's just do that real quick to hopefully stave off any kind of impending doom. All right, so we now have a full wall of elite botany pots. We'll see if that's enough to um, to cover our current lava usage. It, it honestly might not be. I, uh, I'm not entirely certain. We are making almost double the amount of cobblestone that we were a few moments ago, so I'm hopeful that, uh, that it should be enough. I'm hopeful that we'll start to see uh, this tank here slowly but surely banking up with lava and hopefully next time when we come back we've got just like a nice little buffer going and we hopefully won't have to worry too much about it yeah this looks like it is uh is backing up again which you love to see uh I, we are definitely gonna need more lava in the future because we're gonna start using more power we're gonna put down another magmatic dynamo it's gonna be a whole thing uh, but for the time being this is once again kind of starting to back up a little bit yeah that's good okay cool but next time we'll come back and i think we will look at seeing about completing the chapter challenge six quest line this one right here if we can complete this we get those nether star and dragon egg seeds and with those that's going to unlock the next tier of botany pot the ultra botany pots those are five times faster than regular botany pots and so about 2.5 times faster than the current botany pots but they also give you 2.5 times more output and so upgrading all of our elite botany pots to ultra botany pots is gonna be a huge massive like jump in the amount of, uh, of resources that we're generating and should give us more than enough cobblestone to, to progress forward. And again, especially once we get those nether star seeds, we can craft really as many nether stars as we want and make as many hopping botany pots as we want. To get this reward, we are gonna have to get the portal crown block, which involves going through and completing uh, this quest line here. There's some kind of quest line that involves going to a dimensional dungeon. I have no idea what this is. I have not played with this mod, but I'm intrigued as to what it entails. Uh, but we'll, set, we'll take a look at that. We'll make some dimensional shards. We'll maybe look at getting into flux networks and wireless power so we don't have to keep manually charging our wireless crafting grid because as you can see, um, it's not even been that long and we're already halfway through the power that it has. And whilst it doesn't take too long to recharge, it is a bit of a pain to have to manually recharge it over and over and over again. And uh, once we've done that, we can then start to look at getting the ender organic matter and uh, moving on to the end quest line. But those are all problems for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Seopolis there.